Hello everyone. So we are back with again the sales of Goods Act. So today we will be studying the part five of the sales of Goods Act and I'll name it as the unpaid seller and the rights of the unpaid seller. So let's begin then. So we will be first dealing with the definition of unpaid seller. An unpaid seller is a person who has not been paid the whole of the price or paid by negotiable instrument, which is subsequently dishonored. The definition of uh, unpaid seller is given under section 45, subsection one of the Sales of Goods Act. Unpaid seller means who has not been paid or tendered the whole of the price of the goods sold. This means suppose rupees 100 was due and he has received just 99 rupees. One rupee is still unpaid. Then also he'll be considered as an unpaid seller. Or who has received a bill of exchange or any other negotiable instruments like check as a conditional payment. The condition being that the instrument shall be duly honored. But at the time when it was to be, when the check is to be paid, then it got dishonored. There we can say that the seller is unpaid. So we have discussed both the situations where the seller can become unpaid. So hopefully this is clear to all. Now we will move on to the rights of the unpaid seller. The next topic. Rights of unpaid seller can be classified into two broad heads. First one, right against the goods. And another one, right against the buyer. So first we learn about the right of an unpaid seller against goods. So basically seller has three rights against the goods. First one is right of lien, right of stoppage and transit, right of resale. We'll be dealing with all the three one by one. The right of an unpaid seller against the goods. The first one, the right of lien. Lien implies such type of right which can retain possession of the goods and refuse to deliver them to the buyer until the price is paid. So seller, unpaid seller can exercise his right of lien in three cases, which we will be discussing now. So you have hopefully understood the meaning of lien. Lien means retention of the possession of the goods. So situations under which unpaid seller will be retaining the possession are where the goods are sold without any stipulation as to credit, means no credit period is being given to the buyer for making payment. So he has to pay instantly when he has received the goods or where the ownership is being transferred to the buyer. Where the goods are sold on credit, but the credit term or period is expired, means suppose 10 days time was given to the buyer, but now the 10 days are expired and now it's around 11th day, 12th day, any other day than the more uh, than the 10th day. So it's being expired, the period is being expired, the credit term, and now the seller can exercise lien over it if he is not getting the price where the buyer becomes insolvent but the time of credit is not expired we will not check the time of credit or the term of credit because the seller has uh, because the buyer has become insolvent so it's it's probably sure that buyer will not be able to make the payment of the goods so he'll become unpaid seller so he's exercising the right of lien 
So if the buyer becomes insolvent, the lien inspect uh, the lien exists of the goods is sold on credit and the period of credit is not yet expired then also we'll consider that obviously he'll not be able to pay so that's why lien can be exercised in case the goods are sold on credit it is presumed that the buyer shall keep uh, keep his credit good so before the payment if the buyer becomes insolvent the seller will be entitled to play the right and hold the goods as security for the price right of stoppage of goods in transit the right of stoppage of goods in transit means that the goods are stopped while they are in transit when the carrier will be intimated that the goods shall be again back returned back to the seller so we can understand that the right of stoppage in transit is actually the extension of the right of lien so here the seller will be stopping the goods in transit and he will be regaining his possession back according to section 50 unpaid seller can exercise the right of stoppage in transit under following conditions when the buyer became insolvent when the property has passed to the buyer when the goods are in the course of transit the third one is really important We'll be discussing it in more detail when we'll be doing section 51. Section 51 laid down this right of stoppage in transit can be exercised only as long as the goods are in the course of transit. Only and only when the goods are in the course of transit during the transit, only this right can be exercised. If the goods reach the destination, and the journey is over, then the right of stoppage in transit cannot be exercised anymore. As per section 51, the goods are deemed to be in course of transit from the time when they are delivered to the carrier or other bailey for the purpose of transmission to the buyer until the buyer or his agent takes delivery of them on the other hand the transit is deemed to be at the end in the following cases so we will be discussing few cases under which it will be assumed or it will be deemed that the journey has ended or course of transit has now come to an end so therefore the seller will not be able to exercise his right of stoppage and transit first case when the buyer takes the delivery after the goods have reached the destination if from point a to point b the goods were to be sent if it reached point b and the buyer has taken the delivery of the goods then the transit is said to be over when the goods obtain when the buyer obtain the delivery of the goods before arrival of the goods at the appointed destination suppose our appointed destination is point b then uh, and uh, it started from point a and in between some point c is coming so buyer or buyer's agent has taken the delivery before reaching the destination only midway in point c only he has taken the delivery so obviously now it will be said that the goods have uh, transit of goods is now over third case when the goods have arrived at the destination and carrier acknowledges to the buyer that he holds the goods on his behalf means that from point a to point b the carrier has reached the destination that is our point b and now he is acknowledging that he has reached the place the decided place where the delivery shall be made and now the he is just waiting for the buyer or buyer's agent to take the delivery of the goods and he has intimated the buyer that he has he has intimated the buyer that he has reached the destination when the goods are arrived at their destination but the buyer instead of taking delivery requests the carrier to carry the goods to some other place 
some further destination and if the carrier agrees to take them to the new destination means suppose the goods were to be delivered from kolkata to mumbai and when it reached the place which was decided that where the delivery will be made that is any place of mumbai it was decided that now was suppose place a in the city of mumbai was the desti uh, destination and the carrier reached place a okay but now when he is acknowledging that where the, where i have reached place a and he is just waiting for the buyer to collect the goods buyer instructed him to take the goods to place b in the same city or maybe some other place in other city deciding upon depending upon the situation suppose in the same city in place b means in mumbai only but some other place the buyer is waiting for where for taking the delivery so now the carrier will be taking the goods from a to b on the instruction of the buyer so here we will say that the journey has already come to an end when it reached point a when the carrier wrongfully refuses to give delivery of the goods to the buyer to the buyer means that the carrier is there is some dispute between the buyer and the carrier at the time of delivery and the carrier is wrongfully refusing to give him the delivery so obviously the dispute shall be sorted out but we will consider it as a end of transit for the goods next right right of resale Beside the above two rights, that is the right of lien and the right of stoppage in transit, unpaid seller can also exercise the right of resale. Under Section Fifty Four, certain circumstances are given under which the right of resale can be exercised. Goods must be of perishable nature then obviously seller will not be waiting for the price if he is not getting from the buyer he will search another buyer and he will sell it to the other buyer who is willing to give him the price unpaid seller must exercise the right of lien and stoppage in transit so unpaid seller has already uh, exercised his right of lien and stoppage in transit both the rights or either of it and now he has the possession of the goods so he can sell it to some other person who will be able to give him the price seller must give a notice to the buyer regarding his intention to resale before resale the seller must intimate the buyer that he will be reselling the goods if he is not getting any price from the buyer and if no response is received from the buyer's end then the seller will be exercising his right of resale the seller can recover the loss of resale if any from the defaulting buyer so suppose previously the price decided was 100 rupees but when the seller is finding some other person he is willing to take the goods suppose at rupees 95 so the loss of 5 rupees per unit will be borne by the defaulting buyer the previous buyer who was not paying the price that's why the seller had to sell it to some other person the seller can keep a surplus on the resale with himself suppose the goods of 100 rupees previously decided price he was able to uh, get the goods on the resale suppose he can he was able to sold it to 110 then the 10 rupees per unit the surplus shall be retained by the seller himself unpaid seller has a right of withholding delivery of the goods which are the subject matter of the contract if he is not getting the price he may withhold the delivery he may delay it he may say that first give me the price then only the delivery shall be made this right can be exercised the right of resale by the unpaid seller even if the sale was on credit or in case of specific and a certain goods if this right is applicable to all kinds of goods so the seller can exercise his right even if the goods were sold on credit and now the credit period has expired and then also is not getting the money
so he can use the right of free sale so hopefully all the three kinds of right that is right of lien right of stoppage in transit and the right of resale is clear to all now we'll be moving into the different set of rights that is right of unpaid seller against the buyer personally so basically he has a right to sue the buyer for price under section 55 in case of property of goods passing to the buyer and wrongfully the buyer neglects or refuses to pay the pay for the goods he has received or he became the owner of such goods then he uh, the seller may you may sue him for the price seller can sue the buyer for price if he is not getting the price from the buyer as for 55 by 2 in case the price of goods is payable by the buyer to the seller on a certain day irrespective of the delivery of the goods and the buyer neglects the or refuses to pay such price then the seller can sue him for the price of goods even though the ownership of the goods are not transferred to the buyer then also because it was already decided then he has got the delivery of the goods right or whether he has yet not received the delivery but the ownership is passed to the buyer the buyer has to give the price to the seller his seller's right is there to receive the price and if the buyer is delaying it or neglecting it or refusing it that he will not pay now then obviously the unpaid seller has a right to sue him for price right of another right of the unpaid seller that is suit of damages for non-acceptance in case where the buyer wrongfully neglects or refuses to accept and pay for goods the seller may sue him for damages for non-acceptance so apart from suing him for price he may also be sued for damages for non-acceptance under the provisions laid down under 73 of the contract act such damages are measured so how to measure those damages we will learn now in case of having a having available a market price for the goods in question the difference between the contract price and the market price on the date of breach shall be the quantum of damages so contract price was agreed as 100 rupees and the market price on the day when the contract was to be executed was suppose 105 so the loss faced by the seller is 5 rupees instead of he is he has done an agreement previously so that's why he was able to he was willing to sell it or he had to sell it for 100 rupees if not there was an agreement between the buyer and the seller he if he would have in uh, in the spot market he would have sold it he would have so he would have received 105 because the buyer is not accepting the goods or he has breached the contract the seller is also not able to sell it to in the market or he will be selling it in the market he may exercise the right of resale but obviously he had faced certain losses because of this buyer's refusal so this is the quantum the five rupees per unit will be the quantum of damages that is the difference between the contract price and the market price in case having no such availability of market price the measures will be ex estimated uh, measure will be the estimated loss suffered directly or indirectly resulting in the ordinary course ordinary course of event from the such breach so fraud from the breach of the buyer if the seller has suffered any losses directly or indirectly and if the market price is not easily available in the market of the goods in question then we will be determining the estimated loss and that loss shall be borne by the buyer so seller can sue him for price obviously and he can also sue him for the damages suit for repudiation of the contract before due date sometimes the buyer puts an end to the contract before the due date of the delivery suppose the due date of the delivery is 1st of february so on the 1st of february the delivery shall be made but the buyer is here 
uh, not accepting the goods or he is repudiating the contract before 1st of Feb. Section 60 states where either party to the contract of sale repudiates the contract before the due date, before the date of the delivery, the other may either treat the contract as subsisting and wait till the date of delivery or he may treat the contract as rescinded and sue for damages for the breach. So in this case, uh, before 1st of February, suppose on 15th of January itself, the buyer has communicated that he is no more willing to take the goods from seller. So here the seller may do either of the two things. First, that he may treat the contract as subsisting. So he will still wait for the 1st of February to come when there was a date of execution or when there, when there is a due date of the delivery will come. So on the 1st of February till then, he will be considering that the contract is still going on, even though the other party has refused to take the goods. Other party has rescinded the contract. Or he may treat the contract as rescinded on the 15th of Jan itself and sue the buyer for damages for the breach. So he can immediately take the action or he may wait for the due date to come and thereafter he'll take the appropriate action. Suit for interest. In case of the breach of contract on the part of the seller or the buyer, I may say, the buyer may sue the seller. If the breach is done on the part of the seller, the buyer may sue the seller for interest from the date on which the payment was made. So from the date, suppose the, some money was already being given and still the seller is not giving the delivery to the buyer as per the dates fixed by them, then the buyer can sue him for the interest. He has to get back the money, obviously, which he has already paid to the buyer, uh, to the seller. Along with that, he'll also charge some interest. And this is this condition is also true in case of seller also. So if the seller is a grief party, he can also sue the buyer for interest, if any. Right? So. This is uh, given under section 61, subsection 2. We have completed all the rights of an unpaid seller against the goods and against the buyer personally. So this comes to an end of our Sales of Goods Act 1930. And I have divided the entire Sales of Goods Act in, four, in, in five parts. So this was the last part of Sales of Goods Act 1930. Hopefully you have understood the entire act which we have discussed. And I would expect that you revise it from your end. And, and hopefully all the sessions were, I would say, understood by you. So thank you for your patient listening.